the context of the P2P value project, we have been working on a deliverable, which is related to public commons partnerships. And uh, today I will present you two cases that uh, we have been investigated, namely the Greek and the Ecuadorian case. Uh, it should be highlighted that uh, this is a working deliverable. So, and it is expected that uh, the deliverable will be finalized by the end of the month and uh, it will be uh, available on the P2P values uh, website. I will move this one. Okay, so uh, why Greece and Ecuador? Uh, the Greek case was selected because uh, there has been an effort to promote a commerce oriented agenda by the newly uh, elected government of Syriza. And uh, moreover, the financial and the social crisis uh, have activated a high level of social uh, experimentation, uh, such as the emergence of different types of uh, social cooperatives and the demand for uh, open access to data. Um, regarding the case study of Ecuador, uh, it was uh, selected due to the global originality of the Free Libre Open Knowledge Society project, uh, which took place in uh, 2013 and 2014. Uh, that was a project that was funded by the Ecuadorian government and uh, the aim uh, was to change the productive matrix uh, towards a social economy of knowledge. There are people uh, over here that know much better than me about this project. So, uh, in order to document the public policies uh, related to the commons and analyze their level of success, uh, we first studied material uh, that were relevant to our cases, like interviews and uh, declarations uh, prior to the elections in the case of Syriza. Uh, we then examined how uh, the policy proposals were formed and uh, what exactly were their main goals. Subsequently, uh, we interviewed uh, 25 different uh, key players, including uh, Michelle Bowens and uh, John Daristakis, who are here with us today. And there are other uh, people like uh, uh, MPs and uh, governmental officials, uh, representatives from uh, institutes and, and uh, initiatives, and uh, finally some national and international experts on the field. Uh, then we cross-examined the data that were collected and formed the narrative uh, for each case. Um, so let's see some of the reviewed policies uh, per case, along with their level of uh, implementation, starting with Greece. Uh, the first policy was related to the improvement of uh, legislation, uh, legislation for a social solidarity economy. Uh, the main objectives uh, were to simplify bureaucratic procedures and uh, reform the tax system to support the social solidarity economy. Um, a number of important uh, changes were made. For example, uh, the time needed for the approval of a new cooperative uh, was decreased from eight months to one and uh, the social solidarity initiatives were included as beneficiaries at the relevant state funding uh, tool. Um, the second policy uh, was related to the opening of uh, public data. Uh, although there is a very good uh, institutional framework related to the open data today, uh, it is often limited by the lack of uh, regulatory acts, uh, secondary legislation, and the will for implementation. Uh, the third policy, uh, relates to the lack of mechanisms that uh, would encourage citizen engagement in the open decision-making processes. Um, despite the presence of uh, several digital platforms, citizen participation in the public deliberation is very low, since uh, there are no tools to measure the extent to which their comments are taken into account. Um, moreover, um, education appears to be a sector where uh, positive narratives uh, exceed the negative ones. Uh, there are uh, recorded efforts to advance awareness on the uh, open source philosophy in both uh, governmental, institutional and grassroots level, uh, but there are no particularly uh, interconnected. Um, in addition, uh, while uh, public policies on uh, open data in Greece are uh, gradually improving, uh, this was not the case uh, for the open source and open hardware cases. Um, relevant uh, le legislations are prepared, uh, but there is a lack of uh, the necessary technical support at the moment. And uh, last, the creation of an uh, independent institute was proposed, uh, which would provide education and a forum for uh, social solidarity initiatives and also conduct research. Uh, however, uh, this is not currently included in the governmental priorities due mainly to financial uh, issues. 
uh, moving to the case of uh, Ecuador, this table presents the key public uh, policies that were uh, reviewed uh, in that case. Uh, the first one uh, was related to the creation of a network between cooperatives. Uh, currently, uh, technological cooperatives being created to interconnect the whole solidarity economy and uh, the cooperative uh, funding system. Uh, regarding open data, uh, although many projects are active, the current result is considered to be poor, uh, mainly due to the low understanding of the importance of the process. Another difficulty that was reported is that the uh, government did not feel very comfortable uh, with uh, open participation, especially when uh, such processes could directly affect the final uh, decisions. Um, in addition, uh, various training actions on several sectors were realized to educate people and uh, trigger the interest of institutions for the implementation of the proposals. Um, also, uh, a macro factory for open farming machines was, uh, was initiated in the city with uh, the support of the mayor. Uh, this, the project started in a dynamic way, but uh, soon went down due to the lack of uh, financial support. And last, an institution uh, was created to facilitate the migration uh, towards free software. Uh, it is estimated that the project uh, will be fully implemented in all ministries of the Sectoral Council of Knowledge and Human Tunnel, uh, Talent by the end of uh, 2016. So some uh, general uh, problems that uh, we identified in these two cases. Uh, the first one is the ignorance on the open source issues uh, or the underestimation of uh, their importance. Also, uh, many interviewees uh, focused on the fact that there is no appropriate methodology to implement such policies. And um, uh, this uh, can also be explained by the fact that the main problems appeared in the implementation phases. Uh, also, uh, there are no appropriate licenses, like uh, the case with open hardware. They're not available right now. And uh, there are no uh, trained staff or institutions to provide uh, such training. Uh, last, uh, there has been an observa uh, observation re related to the fragmented co-op co movement, especially in Greece. And in some general uh, proposals, we are currently uh, working on this part of the deliverable, so it will be updated soon. Um, one proposal would be to promote uh, education and uh, build awareness on social solidarity economy and the commons, especially uh, to uh, political parties officials. Uh, second, we should uh, develop pilot projects in order to test our policies and ideally on a smaller scale and not that of the of a nation or state. Uh, also, we should uh, utilize existing resources rather than uh, building things from scratch. And uh, we should align projects with existing funding programs of the European Union. And uh, we should also create incubators and uh, financing mechanisms for uh, commons-based peer production. And uh, I will close with a general uh, remark that might be of interest. So a lot of uh, interviewees uh, have mentioned that traditional left is usually aiming to empowering the state. Um, so commons uh, might be perceived as the reduction of the state's role. So they are usually treated with skepticism or even as a competitor. Um, so pre presenting the commons as a public good might uh, reduce the resistance of those holding a cautious attitude. Uh, also demonstrate the usefulness of commons in the social field and uh, open channels for uh, dialogue.